What's up, how's it going? So, like a few days ago, I ordered some Luna Moth eggs off the interwebs, and they came in this nice books. I like books. I don't like books. Okay, so here are the eggs. They're on these little pieces of cardboard. I counted them. I have 56, give or take. Um, but uh, the reason I'm filming this, even though I've already filmed Lunas and bred those is because I forgot that I never actually filmed the caterpillars. So I, if I am to breed all of the um, Actia species and I'm missing one of them off my channel, and it's the one that I have the most access to, being that I live in its area, well then, it's gonna look a little bit bad. So, I bought some. I bought 36, so, f and 55 came. That's really, really nice. I, I heavily enjoy this. Some very, very nice odds for some breeding here. Now, um, just a few updates on the channel that's been happening. Uh, corona and this all this nonsense has really ruined all my packages. Like, eggs just are not coming, and cocoons really aren't either. So, I had... A bunch of eggs that had like either arrived like a week and a half or like two weeks after and they were all dead and hatched and there were a few like I had ordered um Arivillus erratus eggs and they actually did arrive they arrived within seven days so a week so for some reason the packaging delays were spared spared that one and uh They uh, died. They didn't start feeding. It was uh, it was sad. And I was kind of angry, but I shall try again and persevere. But so I'm starting this uh, series. It's basically my life of a moth, which is a knockoff of a uh, Bart Copen's moth cycles. So really, this series is a knockoff of a knockoff. So that's nice. Um. So this is just gonna go through that and we're gonna put it in basically a moth cycles for moon moths and this includes all of them. I don't care what genus, if it's a moon moth, then it goes in. I might even include um, Eudaimonia if I feel like it or ever get eggs. But yeah, so I'm just gonna update y'all on these cocoons. I am releasing in 2021 a Promethea, you saw the uh, caterpillars and a few cocoons I think on my channel. I am releasing a Life of a Moth on those, however I'm assuming that they're going to hibernate till next spring and so you're going to have to wait for that. They're in my moth cocoon box outside, but yeah, so I'll uh, inform y'all when these guys hatch. And uh, when they do, we can start up. I'll show y'all, uh, like, the stages on my YouTube channel. But all of the information, all like that deep content is going to be on the Moth Cycles knockoff video. It's not all just going to be on my channel. Like, I'll post, like, maybe third or fourth in star. Maybe when they first hatch. And then when they're about to cocoon. And then I'll show the cocoons in my overwintering box. That's about it. And these guys are definitely gonna hibernate. I mean, I have the eggs in August, so they're definitely gonna hibernate. But they'll probably be finished by like September and there'll be no time to breed anymore after that. So I'll keep y'all posted. See you next time. So what's up guys? We are back to our box of Lunas. And what do you know, I look into here today, and here's what I see. Some Lunas are hatching. We got caterpillars in here, all over the place. We got a bunch of hatchlings. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna wait till tomorrow morning. We got Sweet come in here, and we're gonna wait till they start feeding. Once they do, I'm gonna update y'all, and then we can continue on with this life of the moon. Light models of the moon, you know what I'm saying? Four in this pan. 
Should have a bunch of eggs below there. Real nice, real nice. Yeah. So yeah. I'll update to you when they start to feed. See you later. What's up guys? Okay, so we're back today. As you can see, we have some poo poo and some bite marks around here. So we have gotten feeding. I, I knew it was gonna be easy. It was just like, yeah, get that done. So yeah, I'm gonna update all when we get to like Instar 2 or something like that. Here a few days later with our Lunas. So we're just gonna open up this container, see how they're doing. We do have some growth in here. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna cut the little fragments of leaves that they're on off of them. And then we're going to uh, switch them with uh, some new leaves I have uh, over here. So yeah, let's do that. I'll uh, get back to you when I do. So there we go. I got everything off of this and on to in here. Got some new plant in there for them. That'd be nice. I'll uh, check on these uh, when they get to Instar 2. All right, see you next time guys. Hello guys, here so we're back with our Actius Luna caterpillars, and as you can see, most of them are now L2. Any of them with these black dots on their heads and butt are L2, so we have a, quite a few of them that made it. Yeah. Or later today, I'm gonna go out and uh, get more food and change up, change it out for these old stuff because this is getting bit old and uh, uh, poop so I'm gonna clean it stuff I'll update you when that happens uh, see y'all later hey yo guys so so today I just wanted to show off my lunas and some sinensis larva that I have. I have many Lunas. I only have a few Sinensis though. Like that's a synensis right there. So I just wanted to show these guys off. I have a third synensis down there. I don't know if he'll survive. Okay, Z. So I has many Lunas. 
I have many. I have, I don't know how many specifically, but I have more than 20, possibly 30 something. There we go. Some of them have green faces, some of them have brown faces. This one right here is actually my first L5 so far. And this is actually really cool. He has blue dots instead of red ones, which is kind of weird. I have many, many in here, as you can see. And up here, I have a Sinensis larva. That's an L3. I have two more in here in other places, if I can find them. Bear with me. I don't think it was really the best idea to stick two basically identical species in the same box. But, oh, here's, there's another one. There you go. Yeah, I have one more in there, and I'm planning on making a hybrid of a Luna and a Sinensis since I don't have much chance of getting a regular Sinensis pairing. So, yeah, that's what's happening. Guys, we're back at it again with some spicy moth content. So today I just wanted to show off two moon moths I have today. As you all know, moon moths are the superior race and uh, all other creatures and moths are 100% inferior, including humans. Now, let us go through these truly superior creatures. I have two species in here right now. One is Actius sinensis, and the other one is Actius luna. Let us go through them together. All right. First off, let's just look at the luna first. Right here we have my biggest luna, and the boxes is an L5. I personally think these are cool because instead of the red dots, they actually have blue dots. A little bit hard to tell from the from the quality of the camera, but let's take some of this out. It's a little bit better. And I do not have a very good hatching rate on my Sinensis, so I don't have too many of those. But here's one. As you can see, it's going to um, in star four right now. It's very nice, very nice. Ooh. And I have two more sentences in here. Might be in here. Don't think of it. As you can see, there are very many. Some others are L5, like this one here. We have a lot, like all of these on like right here are going to L5. See? And... Yeah. Let's look for some sinensis in here. Also, some very, very exciting things. I am receiving 40 eggs of Actius rhodonuma. Remember how last year I was going to say that? I was going to get those? I received eggs of that moth last year. 
and I really, really wanted some. I really wanted those guys to race, but I did not. I failed. And hopefully, the package delays because of this stupid corona thing are not going to mess up my package and delay them. And I'll hopefully be able to get those. I'm also getting Du Bernardi. Just getting a whole bunch of moon mods. But I really, really hope that those eggs arrive. Because I really... I am craving those species right now. I have been trying to get Rotonuma livestock ever since October, October of last year, and I'm finally getting them again. And I've never actually received Dubinardi livestock because I just couldn't afford it, or Corona just would not let me have my packages. So that's that. But that has been our video looking at my Luna moths. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Hopefully, when my eggs of the Dubernardi and Rotonuma arrive. Also, everybody, if we have to sacrifice one of those mo moon mobs to arrive alive, just so that the other one will, everybody in the comment section type, Rotonuma is life, and hopefully we can get this uh, Rotonuma to arise and show the universe that I deserve respect and Rotonuma in my life. So please, everybody in the comment section, comment, Rotonuma is life! And you will receive a like. And the first person to do it, I will pin your comment. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Okay guys, so if you were wondering, I have actually been raising my sinensis communally with my Luna because I had not a very good hatching rate on those and I had a lot of them die out of the six that did hatch. I only have two left now. So we're raising them um, together. So what you're gonna see is actually the first videos. It's actually gonna be the first few videos I made of the Sinensis moth cycles. I mean, life of a moth. And that I'm gonna be merging that with this one right now so that you can see how they became together. So, yeah. Hey guys, we're back for Actia Sinensis here. I just wanted to show you guys this. He's currently going to the second in star. See that there? Other ones in here. Some sweet gum. I'll leave them. I'll update y'all when he does his thing, and uh, we'll be back. Hey guys, what's up? So I'm gonna show y'all today this. It's our first Luna Moth cocoon. I can still feel it. Uh, this was made very, very recently. It's only like a day old. I'll show you the uh, other one. We're actually just gonna put this in my overwintering box. I'm gonna show you my uh, other cocoons. I mean, not other cocoons, I'm going to. I'm gonna go put this in my box. I'm gonna show you my other Luna Moth caterpillars. So let's get to it. Well, here we are with our Lunas. I'm gonna show off where we are so far. I have many, many. I'm gonna change their food real fast. Fast, I just needed to show them off. I expect a bunch of cocoons in my near future. Because basically all of these are L5 right now. Now let's see if I can find... I see one of my Sinensis. Let's see if I can find the other one. I think that's the other one right there.
I don't know what happened to him. He was in like a weird position. Hope he's fine. Take him out of that corner. Yeah, he looks okay. I'll, I'm keeping an eye on him. But here. My other one. On focus. Look at that. Good. This is an L4, by the way. These are sinensis. I really do love this species. Hold up. Hello guys, welcome back, and today we're going to show off uh, our progress on these Lunas. And uh, we have all these cocoons, they are all making cocoons, and uh, pupa, and actually here's a pupa. There's a male. Let's uh, count these. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This one looks freshly pupated too. Not as hard as it could be. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This is the first one made, by the way. 19. Ooh, Ooh I accidentally dropped him. He's fine. Twenty one. Twenty two. Twenty three. Twenty four. Yeah. It's twenty four. And that means we have 25 because um, I have one left up in a box. It's uh, chilling out with the Sinensis, which I'll show you because we uh, I said that we were going to combine those. Look at all these Promethea mods. It's nice. So hold up, let me just put these all back in there.
This one's really close to pupating. So I got a Catalpa hawk moth pupa in here. All the other ones died and I found an extra one. So I can still show you those. However, they will not be the ones that I filmed the video of the caterpillars. All right, let's show off the sinensis. This is our first sinensis cocoon. It's finally being made. I'm just gonna wait for it to be completely done. But in the meantime, I'll show the final two. One Luna and one Sinensis. That's all we got left. Let's just hope that we can get the rest. Let's do it. How is it going, guys? Today, we get to conclude our Luna Moth life of a moth video for the first episode ever of life of a moth because finally our first luna hatched this wonderful male right here he just hatched from his coon this morning to be honest i almost forgot about the life of a moth i was making about him but here he is in all his glory i was supposed to overwinter these guys but he did not overwinter, so here he is. The sinensis will not be part of this video because I kind of just want to get this video done, but the uh, sinensis cocoons are still overwintering in the backyard, so I'm just going to post those guys when they hatch. Bart Copens has a feeling that one of them might be a gynandromorph. Not confirmed at all, but he has a slight feeling, so that that's good, that's good, I like that. Um, a little sucky about the uh, expansion, there's like this weird junk on this tail right here. This one, that yellow tipped one. There's some weird gunk on it, which is like, which prevented it from fully expanding that tail. The other tail is good though. Some nice eye spots. The final eucalypti hatched and died today. It was a female. A very nice female, but she died. I, I got one pairing, but I don't think any of the eggs of that were fertile. So that kind of sucks for me. But I'll try again one day. But yeah, that concludes our Life of a Moth episode for the Luna Moth. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next Life of a Moth video. Which is going to be a very, very interesting one if the eggs arrive.